for those of us who still told our Bibles, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 through 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 through 10. And it reads like this. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. God Almighty. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people. And you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Watch this, Lady T. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. I want to preach from the thought where your heart at. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would give us preaching power for these few moments. God, speak to me, speak through me, use me as your tool on this morning that we might be enlightened, oh God, to your heart. And so God, I, right now, we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Use this moment that we might grow closer to thee in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The first week we had to make sure that we don't have a heart attack in this month that we are uh, dealing with the uh, matters of the heart series. And, and last week we talked about uh, the fact that we had to check our hearts. But Vernon, this week, however, the Holy Spirit told me that we had to deal with and ask the question to every believer, where is our heart? The definition of heart is a hollow muscular organ that pumps the blood through the circulatory system by rhythmic contraction and dilation. During this heart month, we have been stressing the need to keep the heart healthy. There is another definition of the heart, however. It is also the central innermost part of something. But today, we want to deal with the definition in which the heart is is regarded as the center of a person's thoughts and emotions, especially love, compassion, or loyalty. It is one's mood or feeling. Drenika, have you ever heard someone say, my heart wasn't in it? And after a lackluster performance in this season, y'all, that we are living in since the end of COVID, there is something different about the body of Christ. Many believers have not returned to the building. Some believers that have returned to the building show up once or twice a month. And some believers won't even give when the truth is, the Bible declares that, that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I remember years ago, y'all, I was at Brandon Middle School, and I remember one day one of our star players was having a bad game. Duke Keisha, we went into the locker room, and the coach came in, y'all, and he was at a place where he was just beside himself because he knew that his team was better than they were showing on the field. He started to talk to his team and he said I don't know what's going on he says I know that y'all can do better than this I know for a fact because I've seen you do it before and we've done some things in practice that I know that you are prepared for this moment and at that moment I need everybody to catch this because this one brother the star player he stands up and he walks over to the coach and he says coach my heart ain't in it I don't want it no more and everybody behind them looked up and they began to wonder what in the world was going on because the reality is y'all over the years he had taken some beatings and he had been de dealing with some personal stuff and then at that time y'all he 
found himself at a place where he couldn't fight no more and what God told me is y'all that some of us in here have been going through some things over the years and we have gotten to a place y'all where it seems like we are not going to win but God told me to tell somebody in here that you got to check where your heart at because you got to understand that if God be for you who is the whole world against you do I have at least 10 of y'all in the building that will just rise up on your feet and declare I've been through hell and high water I know things have been tough it looks like I'm losing sometimes but I got to trust God in the midst of it can I get somebody to give God praise in this building and declare even though I've been through the struggle my heart is still in this thing do I have a worshiper in here that will look at your neighbor and ask them the question where is your heart at where is your heart at it's crazy because I don't know about y'all but every now and then when I'm because I've been through heart disease it's crazy watch this y'all there'll be times when I'm sitting in the house and I'll feel something in my chest beat funny and I'll do like this okay maybe y'all on this side y'all ain't never been there but every now and then watch this April I'll put my hand on my neck and I'll just sit there and one day we were sitting there looking at TV and Tasha say what are you doing you feel all right I say yeah I'm fine she said why you got your hand on your neck I say nothing and watch this the whole time the whole time Kenny I was checking my pulse just to make sure that I could feel the pulse but I didn't have my finger in the right place and I didn't feel nothing and I said boy where your heart at can I hit us with a, a gut punch here? God is asking the body of Christ to check the pulse. He says, because sometimes it seems like you are here, but I don't feel a pulse. You come into church, but I don't feel a pulse. You sit here in the building, but I don't feel a pulse. God is saying, sometimes you got to check your pulse and check your heart to make sure that you're still in this thing. Somebody here needs to understand, sometimes y'all, we come to church, but we leave our heart at the crib. Do I have anybody here that will declare, when I come to this place I come with everything that I got I come to lay my heart before the Lord because God has been too good to me do I have anybody in here on a Sunday morning that I don't come in here just because it's a Sunday thing to do I come in here so that I can figure out where my heart at because the God that I serve been too good to me and I got to show him that I love him and that I'm loyal to him Evan, the reason why we do what we do is because we check the pulse. And we got to really figure out, watch this y'all, where our heart is. So the first point I wanna leave us with, and I'm trying to get out of here so the boys can get to their appointment. There are times in all of our lives when our actions don't meet up with our words or our character standard. But when such times occur, according to this text, we have to understand that thoughts and words are not enough, but that our heart must line up with our actions. Here it is. We will know our hearts are in the right place when we, point one, remain loyal. Remain loyal and kind. Here it is. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Watch this, y'all. The definition of loyalty is a strong feeling of support or allegiance. Loyalty is that thing on the inside of you that keeps you connected to something or someone no matter what you're going through. I was looking at FedEx. I mean, I was looking at, I was looking at um, 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 TikTok. And this mama came in and played a prank on her daughter. She said, our next door neighbor wants to fight me. She says, so I got to go out here and fight her. She says, and her daughter coming too. And her daughter's a little bit bigger than you. She says, but I need you to fight the daughter so I can fight the mama. The first clip, the little girl said, mama, I don't know about this. But the second clip, the little girl said, Mama, where she at? And she started putting on her shoes. And she started getting herself together. She said, because if you go in the fight, I'm going to fight too. How many of y'all know that there are some people in your life that when the fight gets heavy, they ain't with you. You need some folk in your life that'll fight no matter how bad the situation is. Can I get somebody here that will rise up on your feet and tell God, God, no matter how bad this thing got, when you get to fighting God, I'm going to be right there behind
inside you do i have any fighters in the building that will declare god i'm gonna stay loyal no matter how bad no matter how bad it gets but what happens is is that our hearts get weak when we start to go through things even those of you online you got to understand that the enemy is strategic he wants you to get to a point where you stop being loyal he says watch this not only remain loyal but continue to be kind to folk Yo, I'm gonna tell y'all right now when my mama said that she hadn't had the lunch I had to check myself because I wasn't gonna be kind when I went up in there because my loyalty is to my mama and so I had to make myself understand that you still have a standard that the kingdom requires of you how many of you all know that when we show up every now and then God is checking the pulse when we won't serve God is when we give up after one situation God is how many of y'all know that all the stuff that you're going through the reason why it, look, it feels like a merry-go-round is because you ain't passed the test yet because every time something happened you crumble under the pressure but if you loyal to God he said I'll take care of you do I have any witnesses in the building that will just say you know what when you're loyal to God God gonna be loyal to you that's the reason why my car is still in the driveway that's the reason why I ain't been evicted yet that's the reason why when I went to the hospital I got healed because I serve a God who is loyal to me no matter what I get through I wish I had somebody that'll get excited because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I got to remain loyal. I'm still old school. If I don't make it to church, I feel like I let God down. If I don't get into the house, I feel like something right. Because God shows up for me, Jamie, every day. God shows up for me every night. You ever woke up and realized you didn't lock the doors? And you say to, you say, somebody could have came in here last night. Not with God on your side. The reason why nobody came in because you've been loyal. And the God that you serve said, you forgot to lock the door. I'm going to set some angels on the outside of the crib. They're going to make sure don't nothing happen to you. Do I have any loyal folk in here that'll say, I thank God because when I'm loyal to him, even when I miss it. He said, even when you miss it, because you've been loyal, I'll be loyal to you. He said, if you keep doing what I asked you to do, he says, you ain't got to worry about a thing. Watch this. Next point I want to give us is, point two is, we will know our hearts are in the right place when we, point two, remain faithful. Here it is. It's in the text. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. No matter what life throws at you, Scooby, you got to remain faithful and trust God at all times. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good, for those of us who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Got some for you. The other day, my brother had his appointment with the cardiologist. And the enemy was telling me, this ain't going to be good news. Brace yourself. And, it, and God was saying, didn't I tell you everything was going to be all right? Watch this. He says, remain faithful. Because watch this. When you doubt God, you're losing faith. So when I called him, he says, I'm on FaceTime. He said, I'm in the doctor's office. I got to call you back. And you know my brother Sean is a little dramatic sometimes. My bad. So he had his mask on. He say, I'm in the doctor's office. I'm going to call. 
haul you when I get out of here. So he calls me when he gets out of there. And I said, what'd he say? I said, what'd he say? He said, he said, everything gonna be all right. He said, I say, well, what about the defibrillator? He says, the doctor said you don't need that yet. He says, he says, watch this. He says, watch this. He says, I've been doing this. Dr. Newton, nothing but the truth. He said, I've been doing this for a long time and I've discovered over the years that if I use these two medications that the patient will recover and won't have to get a defibrillator. He said, so we're going to put you on those two medications and I believe that something going to happen. Do I have anybody in the church today that will declare if you remain faithful, the God that we serve will work it out. You just got to be faithful and trust God and hold on in the midst of what you're going So we'll be at the basketball game and I said, Sean, you feel like you're doing too much? Sean sitting there eating this salted pickle. Sean, should you be eating this pickle? And Sean said, man, the doc said I'm all right. He said, doc ain't said nothing about my diet yet. He said, he said, but when I put these two medications together, he says, I believe we're going to strengthen your heart. So watch this. How many of y'all in this season understand that the only reason why you haven't gotten your breakthrough yet is you keep throwing in the towel too soon. You got to stand there and hold on. I remember y'all when Sister Rachel got sick and the doctors had said literally that it won't much they could do. And this was about a year ago. And when I look at her, y'all, she had heart problems. Her heart was only operating at 30%. Now they got it up to 50. Guess where she at on Tuesdays and Wednesdays? She up at the Mount Virginia Beach serving people food out the back door. Can I get somebody in here to open up your mouth and shall just be faithful? Just be faithful. But here's the last, the third thing. I'm going to get out of here. Third thing is... We will know your hearts are in the right place when you remain humble. See, when you walk in humility, it gives you the heart to do things you would normally do. Verse 7 says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. He says, watch this. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones that thing messed me up because I recognize that my brother y'all Sean is just a, a super nice dude sometimes he just too nice you know I'd be mad at folks I'd be like yo man you're supposed to want to fight with me Sean be like well man you know Sean will hug folks that I don't want him to hug. Sean will be around folk. I'd be like, man, why you? Man, Sean shake everybody's hand. Don't nobody go past Sean without him speaking. I'm like, Sean, you can't speak to all six to eight of these people for us to get out the game. But I learned something from my, my, my baby brother. Sean got a humble spirit. And all he want to do is transfer the anointing on his life. Can you look at somebody and tell them, when you stay humble, you will change somebody else's life just by giving them a shout. Can I get some people in here that will just celebrate the spirit of humility and say, all you got to do is know that you ain't get yourself where you are. Every now and then, God will remind you that the reason why you're where you're at is because of him. And when you recognize how good God has been to you, you speak to folk that you wouldn't normally speak to. But here's my last point, and I'm out. Y'all boys can go swing them golf clubs. This is the point I might not get in the shout song, Sister Gwen. Um, we will know our hearts are in the right place. When we hear it is, point four, remain benevolent. It's in the text. It's not me. It's in the text. It's not me. Watch this. I can just read verse 3 and walk off the stage. 
Verse 9. Watch this, y'all. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, why you struggle with your tithe? Don't you know you wouldn't have none if it weren't for the Lord? Oh, I wish I had somebody that felt that right there. If it weren't for the Lord, you wouldn't have nothing to give. But is there anybody that's glad today that when it's time to give, you got something in your pocket that you can be a blessing to somebody with? I wish I had some church folk in here that understand that, that when I give, it'll give it back unto me. He said it'll be given to me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Anybody ready for overflow in this building? You got to remain benevolent, and God will begin to pour blessings. Watch this. I'm out. I ain't even got to mess with this one. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Can you nudge your neighbors, tell your neighbor, neighbor, stop giving God what's left. We give God the time that's left. We give God the money that's left. When the Bible says, if you seek ye first the kingdom and all his righteousness, everything gonna be added. First check that's written out the Rogers household is to the tithe. Because he says, bring me your best. And you should give it to me first. Watch this. Listen, y'all, listen. He says, then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Y'all, I have seen God do some amazing things in my life. Y'all, watch this. I'm building this shed in my backyard. And ain't nothing cheap these days. You know, and it's taking money, right? And so I'm like, man, I'm trying to do this thing. I've been trying to do it for like eight years. And so I'm like, I'm looking at this thing like, okay, God, I've been faithful to you. So you know, I know you, I need you to come through. This is crazy. I'm sitting there, then my wife goes to the mailbox, brings the mail in. She brings the mail in, and there's an envelope for me. And in the envelope it said, I know you wouldn't take this if I had just given it to you. So when I opened up the envelope, it was from somebody that I did something for months ago. And when I opened it, it was a bunch of 20s. Can't tell you how many. Leave that to the imagination. But it was a bunch of 20s in it. And when I looked at that thing, I heard God say in my ear, why are you worried about that thing in the backyard? He said, didn't I tell you? If you keep serving me, I'm going to take care of every one of your needs. Can you look at somebody beside you and tell them, stop worrying. Just be benevolent. Because when you be benevolent to God, God will bless you in ways you ain't never thought possible. Is there anybody that believes that today? Anybody ever tried God by giving? Can you just stand on your feet and tell somebody, I ain't, you can't be God giving. Every chance I get, I'm going to give to the one that makes it all possible. We ready to get out of here, y'all, but watch this. If we're going to check our hearts, God is asking us, come on, we ready to go home, y'all. We are. What y'all doing? Y'all want some more? Now the problem. Watch this, y'all. I remember when the coach would look, you at, look at you and he would say, man, where your heart at? Y'all ain't playing like you got no heart. And he would look in your eyes. You say heart? I got heart. Y'all was looking at this interview. And I forget the dude's name. But they asked him, they said, how did you get yourself 
to be able to come back from where you were. He said, I'm not as athletic as the other guys. He says, I'm not as tall as all the other NBA players. He said, my wingspan is not as wide as those players. He said, but I got more heart than anybody on the floor. And I hear God asking us, where your heart at? Because if it's, your heart is in the right place, Jamie, we'll serve when we don't feel like it. If our heart is in the right place, we'll give when our mind and our flesh is telling us we ain't got it to give. I've learned over the years that when you trust God and you seek him first, God will not let you down. Can I get some old folk in here that would just be honest and say, he ain't never failed me yet. Can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Hallelujah.